Hello folks, this is Tom from anti-proton.com and welcome to my Halloween spooky special. We're going to look at radioactive household common items, well, somewhat common. We're going to test them and put these little stickers on them if they happen to be radioactive. So join me in my Class D hazmat suit. Well, it's mostly a Class D hazmat suit. And let's look at the spooky Halloween household items. When most people think about household radioactive items, they think of things like radioactive smoke detectors, like this guy right here, which is radioactive, or they think about maybe granite, such as granite countertops and things like that. They produce radon and so on. But there's actually a bunch of other things too, so let's go take a peek at a couple of choice ones. All right, the first thing that we have to look at are a set of plates that were very, very common back in the olden days, in the 50s, 60s, even to, into the 70s. Actually, they started in the 30s. These are called depression glassware, depression pieces. The orange that you see there is made by the, or was made by the Homer Laughlin Company. That's a um, piece of Fiestaware from probably around the uh, 40s to the 50s. It's uh, colored orange by depleted uranium. Grandma and Grandpa usually have lots of this in their house. Also those pieces of green glass are uh, colored green by depleted uranium. We're getting 25,000 counts per minute, mostly alpha. You notice there's very little gamma. Of course, this probe isn't very sensitive to gamma. And yet still, not very much. Watch the alpha. Only when it's very close does alpha have any effect. Now, this is kind of hard to do with rubber gloves, just for the record. Let me see if I can get a better hold of this. There we go. These green pieces here are also depression glass. A little bit different from the Fiesta wear, but they're still de they're colored by uranium. Mostly depleted uranium, sometimes natural uranium. Again, it's mostly alpha. There's some beta and some gamma and some x-ray. Mostly alpha. These can also be spotted for the most part with a black light, although the plate in the very bottom, the yellower colored one, does not actually glow back, nor does the orange one, so black light doesn't always work. Geiger counter is always the best for finding these. Look at that. Beautiful, isn't it? It's like a tree frog. Beautiful, but deadly. I'm going to mark this as radioactive. Oh, they barely show up in the scintillation counter, by the way. Very low gamma. Next up is a thorium lantern mantle. These are used to actually light up lanterns for, like, when you go camping. They used to be. They contain natural thorium. Let's see how hot this one is. Mostly alpha and, and beta. I'm hoping my probe will go back to normal. It should be about 38 counts per minute, but there's so much going on here, it's hard for it to get back down to normal. Just trust me, it should be around 38 counts per minute here. If we gave it long enough, it would be. Anyway, let's just get going because it's going to take forever. Spooky. Now 22, 21, 22,000 counts per minute. The gamma is much 
higher here than the plates, but still reasonably low. Can you hear me breathing every now and then through my gas mask? <laughs> Let's see what the uh, Ludlum scintillation counter thinks. It gets a background of about 2,500 counts per minute. On the times 10 mode, it goes over the scale. Right over the scale. So we're going to switch it to the times 100 mode. And let's zero out the meter. 10,000, 20,000. Nearly 20,000 counts per minute. So about 20,000 counts per minute. We had to go all the way to the times 100 mode. Wow. You just want to breathe those uh, vapors in. <laughs> Looks like I already tagged it. Yeah, we'll try again. Let's pick something else more mundane out, maybe. There you go. Grandpa's old uh, compass. This isn't actually my father's. This is from someone else. I have my own, but it's not with me right this moment. It's a radium-containing compass. All grandfathers have these. If you ever notice that, every one of them. A compass or a, or a watch. And they can be quite hot. That's radium-226. Look up the radium girls from the 20s and 30s if you want to find out what radium does to a human being. To his benefit, most grandpas lived to 70, 80, 90, even after carrying these. That doesn't, of course, mean that they're not dangerous. It just means that they're not automatically lethal. However, you should be very careful if you find one of these in your house. The radium paint can be very deadly if it's inhaled or if it gets into your body in any way. And sometimes these leak and the oil that's been floating around in these compasses or the wash hands or whatever, it can be just oh, really terrible stuff. So if you have one and you want to keep it as a family heirloom, that's fine. Bag it first. Put it in a Ziploc. Put it in a second Ziploc if you like. Stuff it someplace. <clears throat> when you open it up to show somebody, open it up outside and don't breathe in the air. Not very much gamma. Mostly alpha. Mostly a little bit of beta. Let's take a look at the gamma, though. We're in the times 10 mode. Off the scale. Times 100. Zero out the meter. 10,000. 20, 30, 40, 50. Off the scale. Switch to times 1,000. Ha! Ludlum 12, Ludlum Model 12 has a times 1,000 mode. 50,000. 60,000. Looks like around 40, 50,000 counts per minute, somewhere in there. Not bad. That's pretty hot. Grandpa's compass. <laughs> Not something to fool with. A sodium iodide detector does a pretty good job with it, though. But it's only picking up probably around 7 to 10 percent of the gammas, most likely. Ouch. All right, bag it. Spooky. Light salt? P potassium chloride light salt? Could that be spooky? It doesn't look spooky. Wait. It's getting spookier. Nope. Spooky's going down. Spooky's going down. Hmm, the spooky factor's disappearing. The probe must have been already set high from another sample nearby. I should probably put this on a piece of paper and look at it that way. We want to make sure the test is a little bit more accurate. This isn't a scientific test. This is just for fun, but it should be at least somewhat accurate, right? Let's put it on a piece of paper. This potassium is turning into argon and calcium as we speak. 
Aha, the spooky factor is going back up. 114 spooky counts per minute. 130 spooky counts per minute. Spooky! Funny, I actually use that can right there and sprinkle it on my eggs every single morning. Mmm. -hmm. Keeps the eggs hot. <laughs> That's not enough, though. Let's go overboard. This is potassium chloride water softener ta uh, tablets. You put these in your water softener. You have a big 40 pound bag of it on your back uh, porch. 20 something kilogram bag. Wouldn't sit too close to it. And you were looking for ghosts in your closet? Monsters under the bed? How about a big bag of this? Can you hear me breathing in my gas mask? I actually like wearing the respirator. Somehow the air is nice. Oh well. I like hazmat suits. I feel comfortable in them. Very little gamma. Let's use the actual gamma sensor. Sodium iodide detector. hard to see if it's moving. We'll set it to slow response. Look really carefully. Watch it. Watch it. It's gone up a little. Maybe 1,000 counts per minute, 2,000. Barely. That's in the times 10 scale. Oh well. Still. Spooky. Bag it. kind of tasty stuff too. I actually like eating it. I'll put some on some boiled cabbage later on. That should be good. That, that'll end up pretty scary too. Smoke detector. Not the light type. The, re the uh, radioactive type. Americium 241. Now here's an interesting thing. Notice that the Geiger counter doesn't detect much. This ghost goblin scary monster can hide. If we took that case off, I guarantee it would pick it up. It would go crazy. But it can't because the gammas barely pick up on the detector. And the alphas can't make it to the detector. Nothing much. I wonder if the scintillation counter will do a better job. I bet it will. So in times 10 mode. Now nah, we're gonna have to flip this thing over. There we go. There we go. Hard over. That's in the times 100 mode. 20,000 counts per minute. About 20,000 counts per minute. Not bad for a smoke detector. Although what's scarier would be getting rid of one of these. Trust me, fire is more deadly. Much more deadly. I'd recommend having a bunch of those in your house. Now what about that rock collection? You know you like collecting rocks. Here are a couple rocks. Rocks are a great thing to test because they're often radioactive. Well, I shouldn't say often, but... Well, yeah, I guess they are often radioactive. Like this guy. Wait a minute, what the heck? How radioactive is this rock? It's got to be uranium. Okay, it's as hot as a check source. That is one hot piece of uranium right there. It's 
scumite from Ruggles Mine, New Hampshire. Even a pretty potent gamma emitter. Not bad. Definitely want to check that. Just think of how many spooky rocks like that you could have sitting around your house. Whatever you do, don't put them under your bed. Stick them somewhere in a closet where nobody else goes. Right off the scale at times 10. Times 100. Off the scale at times 100. Times 1,000. Look at that. Times 1,000. Let's see where we go. 100,000 counts per minute. 150. Nearly 200,000 counts per minute. Wow. Spooky. Just think that could be in your rock collection. You wouldn't even know. Ooh, spooky. Definitely radioactive. Look how ugly it is, too. But now the last thing on the list. Lots of people have this. Granite from a granite countertop. Ow, ow, ow. There we go. And my glove's stuck. That's why you should always double glove if you're doing it for real. Of course, I'm not doing it for real, so it doesn't matter. But for real, you should double glove in case the first glove is breached. Let's find a hot spot. Remember, the background should be around 38 counts per minute. If you test most granite, because I've tested granite everywhere, I, I always find radioactive granite. It's not very radioactive, but I find it everywhere. I like every house I go into that has granite, I test it 99% of the time. And I think I found like one house one time that had granite that wasn't, which kind of shocked me actually. It's pretty much always radioactive. But it's not very dangerous. I mean, look at that, 100 counts per minute, 120, that's not too high. It emits a little bit of radon gas, but not very much. Your basement's probably a worse offender. But you should have it tested if you're worried. Spooky. Spooky. Beautiful, though. I'd put it in my house. Little uranium. Well, hello, folks. I guess I'm just checking out my candy. Remember, this Halloween, if you celebrate Halloween, to check your candy, because that's an actual thing that can be tampered with and be bad. So have a happy Halloween. Watch out for your kids. Make sure everybody's safe. Things like that which are actually scary, because most of the stuff in your house isn't really, well, it's not really that dangerous. And, but if it just happens to be dangerous, get yourself a Geiger counter and test everything. <laughs> happy Halloween. Oh.